welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a brief look at the new multi-band, multi-mode SDR transceiver from Islands or Retivis called the HS2. Now, I don't really like doing radio reviews as such, so I'm going to create a series of how-to videos for this particular product. And the reason this product has sparked my interest is because it is based on software-defined radio. Now, upon opening the box, I was quite surprised at how small it is and even more surprised at how well built it felt. It feels like the whole radio has been built within one massive heatsink. Now you would have noticed that there are two cooling fans, one either side of the case. Although these are great for keeping the radio cool while transmitting, my recent test on two meters, which is only five watts max power, made the fans kick in and it sounded like I was in a wind tunnel. So the front panel has a nice brushed aluminum finish, and the buttons are laid out quite nicely. Now, if you've got chunky fingers, you might struggle at pressing the right button as these buttons are quite small. However, each of these buttons have a nice click to it, so you know that they've been pressed. Now on the left, we have the mic input, which is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and we have the same if you wanna plug in a pair of headphones. The radio does have a built-in speaker on top of the radio if you don't want to use headphones. Now with the power button on the top left, we also have the band select button and a keypad number entry for manually entering in the frequencies. In the middle, we have the LCD screen and by all accounts, it's actually quite clear. Now, unfortunately, it's not touch screen and you have to use the arrow buttons to navigate, which you will find on the right side of the radio. Now, these arrow keys are also used for changing frequency or fine tuning when using SSB. Now you may have noticed that there is no VFO control on this radio, which is quite surprising as such a small little digital encoder could have been utilized. Now there are other options for this, but we'll talk about them later. Along with the navigation buttons, we find an AF button, which is used for controlling the audio levels, tone and mic gain levels. We also have an RF button, which is used for controlling things like AGC, IF gain, RF gains, and squelch level for when using FM. The R slash X button is used to control the RIT. And then we have the mode button for changing between the modulation modes. Now this radio also has an inbuilt tuner, which you can switch in and out of line by tapping the tune button. Holding the tune button in will activate automatic tuning while down in the HF frequencies. However, the tuner does not work on VHF and above. On the back of the radio, we find a single SO239 socket for the antenna, a ground lug for grounding the radio, a power jack socket, and a standard USB socket, a USB-C socket, and some more connections for using a Morse key or external amplifiers. Now you'll also notice there a LAN connection, which is the RJ45 socket, and an SMA female socket, which you can connect GPS antenna to. Now I don't have the GPS module installed, so I can't show you how that works for now. And as for the LAN connection and the regular USB connection, I believe that these will be utilized in an upcoming firmware release. It has been talked about that in the future, we'll be able to remotely control these radios. The USB-C socket can be used with a supplied cable to plug into your Windows 10 computer. And once plugged in, no driver required, you will have an available COM port and a sound card input and output to the radio. This allows us to control the radio via CAT commands and also pipe the audio out and to the HS2 from your computer. Using the COM port and the inbuilt sound card, you can then easily set up third-party software to work the digital modes. Now in my testing, I used OmniRig as a middleman with OmniRig set up as an FT817. So it appears that the HS2 uses Yesu's FT817 CAT commands for computer control. Now, one other thing to quickly mention, which I'll elaborate more on later, is that you can choose within the radio setting to either send the radio's audio output to the inbuilt sound card, or you can send the IQ data. By using HDSDR software on Windows 10, you'll be able to control the radio's frequency and then view a spectrum scope on your Windows 10 machine live from the HS2 via using the IQ data. Now I'll show you a small demonstration on this shortly. Now also in the box comes the power lead, 
which I was quite disappointed with as it's only just over 30 centimeters long and it doesn't have an inline fuse. I think the first upgrade for me will be to make an inline fused power cable, which is at least a couple of meters long. Now also in the box is the microphone, which at first glance does look like something you would find in a Christmas cracker or a child's toy. But after using it for some time, it's actually quite a nice feel in the hand. And on a plus side, my audio reports on the people that I spoke to were actually quite good. Apparently I sounded quite loud and quite clear. Now one of the surprising features of this radio is the DSP and the noise reduction. Now in that clip we could hear a station call in CQ with and without the noise reduction enabled and for me it sounded so much better with the noise reduction turned on. Now the noise reduction feature is not going to work in all situations but I think it's a really nice feature of the HS2. Now within the menu, we find a VSWR feature that will perform a quick test and provide you with an SWR plot for the band that you are on. Once finished, you can select the marker and move it left and right using the arrow keys. The SWR reading will then be displayed depending on which part of the scan you are on. Now here we have HD SDR running on Windows 10 controlling the HS2 through OmniRig and the HS2 audio is in IQ mode. Now as we change frequency on HD SDR, the frequency also changes on the radio along with modes of modulation. Now as the HS2 is sending the IQ data, HD SDR is able to decode this and plot a waterfall and band scope from the live data. Now, if you are wanting to set this up yourself, then here are the settings for OmniRig that I chose. As mentioned before, it seems to emulate a Yaesu FT817 for its cat commands. Now, don't worry, I will be creating dedicated videos for setting up the HS2 up with HDSDR and other popular digital mode software shortly. So the HS2 is a feature packed all band, all mode SDR based transceiver. The HS2 costs around $650 and I purchased mine from moonraker.eu here in the UK. Now I haven't covered everything in this video as there's lots to cover, but if you have a genuine interest in this radio or would like to know more about specific features, then please leave a comment below and I'll either reply to your comment or I'll make a video about the most requested features. Until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.